In my last video about Power Query, Power Pivot, and XLOOKUP, I had a couple of comments, valid comments, about how my pivot table at the end, the sum of cost wasn't really the sum of the cost of all the units. And I wasn't even thinking about it when I did it, but I thought, actually, that's a really good video, so I'm gonna do a quick one on how I would calculate the proper cost using sum X. Let's go. So a very brief recap, you know, you can go and watch the video from last week. Um, this was the pivot table I produced, sum of cost. And you notice it's got one, two, three, four, which is this one, two, three, four. I'll show you how I did that in a second. But really, you know, the concept is there's, there's three lots of item A and there were 10 units of each. So that's 30 units times $1. So the sum of the cost should really be 30. So, and if you did this with X lookup, let's say, and turned it into a pivot, so equals X lookup, I'm just looking up this item in this list, control space bar, comma, click in the cost column, control space bar, press enter. Okay, I've got these, and then I could multiply it. Let me insert another column here. I could do equals this times that, okay and that would be my cost, and I could put that into a pivot table, and it would give me, so right click, uh, oh sorry, go up here, table design, summarize with pivot table, and existing worksheet. I'll just drop it here, or just over here, so we can see it, click OK. And then I could say, here's my cost in my values by item in my rows. Okay, so that's the result I'm really sort of looking for. It's 30, 60, 90, 400 not one, two, three, four. So how do you do it in the data model? How do you do it in Power Pivot? So here we go. I'm just gonna delete those two columns. So just to recap, I loaded this table into Power Pivot. Let me just show you how I did that. I went right click, get data from table slash range. Okay, pulled it in. I'll just show you one second. And I said, close and load two. So here we go at the top left-hand corner. We say, I won't do it all the way through because I've already loaded it, but we go close and load two. And then we pick only create connection and add to the data model. That's the important bit. And I click okay. So that loads that table. And I do exactly the same thing for the lookup table. Okay, and then I go into Power Pivot. So under Data and the green Manage Data Model button, I go in here and you need to link the tables, okay? Your lookup table and your fact table via the diagram view. And again, this is what I did in the last video. So I just hooked up the item to the item. Okay, just click, drag, and that's your join, your relationship done, okay? It's a one-to-many relationship. Okay, so how then do I do my total cost? Well, I created a pivot table. I said, insert pivot table using the data model. Let me just do it here. I'll do it again. Insert, okay, pivot table from data model. Pick a little table here, okay. And then I said, right, from my lookup table, I want the name in the rows brilliant. And I could then do my units. So, so this is working, okay? 30, because essentially this word apple is filtering this lookup table. And then this item A, because that's the only item for apple, comes down here, filters this table for all the A's, and then we simply sum the cost. We get 30. Okay, so that's how it's working. And then so same for banana, same for carrot, same for dates, which is great, okay? But when we put cost in there from the lookup table, it just filters this lookup table and it gives you one, two, three. So let me just show you that. If I actually go back here, go to the pivot table, if I put cost in, it would just give us one, two, three, four, because Apple is filtering this table and therefore we're summing just the one. Then we filter for banana, we're summing just for the two. So what we really need to do is say, hey, for every row in this data table, multiply the 10 by the one. 
multiply the 10 units for B by the 2 and multiply the 10 units for every row, do that multiplication. And that's where the sum x function comes in, okay? So it's a DAX function, which only works in a power pivot data model. So I'm going to go right click, add a measure. Say DAX measures, it's going to be called cost and I'll put a little dollar sign in there. And it's sum x. So the x part means run down a table doing something and create an imaginary column temporarily. Okay, so the table I want to run down is the table data. Okay, so that's the table I want to run down. And for every row in that table, I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a column and then for, create a little calculation temporarily. And at the end, sum it. That's what the sum part is. So the X part is create this imaginary column and create a calculation for every row. There's an average X, there's a concatenate X, there's a whole bunch, okay? So for every row, I want to take the table data units and multiply it, okay, times the table lookup. Now this won't work, okay? So table lookup, um, and then the price, square bracket. And it doesn't even give you the option, okay? It's not even coming up with the IntelliSense. So what it actually has to do is, you have to use the related function to go and get a value from a different table. So times related, there we go. Bring back the lookup cost. Okay, so if you've got that little relationship going on, Close the bracket, close the bracket. I format as a number. There we go. It could be a whole number, I don't really mind. And I click OK. So now this little function, fx cost, if I put that into the table here, there's my right answer. So for every row in this table, it's temporarily multiplying all the tens by one for item A. All the tens by two for item B and so on. Okay, so that's the sum x. So hopefully that makes sense. So this the x functions are iterator functions. You have to give it a table to say which table to run down. And for every row of that table, it's going to do a calc. That's the x part. And at the end, it's going to sum it. That's the sum part. There's an average x. There's a min x. There's a max x. They do calculations one at a time and then do that calc min max sum at the end and then that temporary column disappears into memory. Okay, hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Catch you later.